All right, we are doing day two of sinusoidal graphs, and let's get right into it. So our objectives for today, you will be able to identify the period of a sinusoidal curve. You will be able to identify the phase shift of a sinusoidal curve, and you will be able to write the function of one when you have the graph. All right, so let's get into periods of a sinusoidal curve. We get, I kind of touched on this in the last video a little bit, but since they have a period of 2 pi, meaning it takes typically 2 pi um, to complete one full, whatever you want to call it, um, the functions y equals a sine kx and y equals a cosine kx, where k is greater than 0, complete one period as kx varies from 0 to 2 pi. So, which we can write like this, so this has to be between 0 and 2 pi, but this number which can affect that, um, actually, we would go ahead and divide both sides by k to get x by itself. So this is what we're left with. Okay, 0 is greater than or equal, or x is greater than or equal to 0, and less than or equal to 2 pi over k. So now, the, again, these the collective term for sine curves or cosine curves are sinusoidal curves. So if you hear me say that, I'm referring to generally both of them. Um, so let's kind of like go into what that whole like you've gone you've gotten amplitude under your belt. Hopefully, let's go under to, to the what the whole period means because if you go back to this, this will make a lot more sense. Actually, specifically, this part of it will make a lot more sense in practice. So let's start with y equals negative the sine times 2x, the sine of 2x. So basically that negative is going to flip our sine curve over. So instead of being over here, and now typically one looks like this, right? So it would take 2 pi to complete that. But remember I said that and again, I'm going to go back a slide here. So when you have that number, this, that k, okay, we're going to divide 2 pi by that, and that's going to tell us how long it's going to take to complete one period. So right now, because this is flipped from here, which you really can't see, so let me change the color a little bit, change it to red. So from here to here is one period. So the time it takes for it to go and complete one cycle. So what happens is, is we have that 2 pi and that 2 pi which is normally what it would take gets divided by this number. So it's 2 pi divided by whatever number is in front of the x. So 2 pi divided by 2 is pi. So now one period instead of taking 2 pi will only take pi as you can see right here. So the amplitude is still 1 because we didn't change that. And the period is now pi. Okay, so now let's look and see what a cosine graph would look like, cosine curve would look like changed. So now we have 1 half. Okay, so no negative sign, so it's not going to get flipped. So now remember, a regular cosine curve would look something like this. And forgive my crummy sketch, but would look something like that. Okay, so the half out in front is going to shrink that. So it basically, it's going to be between these two points. So it would be like that. Okay, and then the 4. So the last one divided um, 2 pi by 2. Now we would take 2 pi and divide it by 4. Reduce that, and that's just pi over 2. So that means it's going to complete one period in pi over 2, which is right there. So let's see if we graph this correctly. And we did, because notice it goes up and then down and then back up. So that's one period from here to here. And that's pi over 2. So that's the time it takes to complete one period. All right. And let's move on. The next one, so just double check that amplitude is one half because it got shrunk because the number in front of cosine is less than one, and then we have the period is only pi over two. And then, last but not least, we have negative two cosine 
1 half pi. So this negative sign is going to flip our cosine graph. So instead of being, you know, a, again, a typical one would look like this. So now, because it's flipped, it's going to look like that initially. The 2 is going to stretch it. So now it's going to go like that. And again, that's a really bad drawing of 1. And then the 1 half, so this is going to stretch it vertically. Stretch vertically. And then the 1 half, so if we have pi, 2 pi, divided by 1 half, when you divide a fraction, remember, you're actually multiplying by the reciprocal. So now your period is going to be 4 pi. So it's going to take 4 pi. So instead of it being here, it's going to take twice that to complete one period. So your graph will look like that. All right. So again, amplitude is going to be 2. Period will be 4 pi. So remember, your amplitude is always positive. All right, so now let's talk about phase shifts. All right, so the graph of a function, now we're, notice we keep adding to this. So we've got y equals a times the sine of kx minus b, and y equals a times cosine of kx minus b. Our sine and cosine curves that are shifted horizontally, left or right, by an amount b. Okay, absolute value of b. So with other functions, if you have minus b, it's going to shift the graph right. If you have plus b, it's going to shift the graph left. Something to note also, when you have it in this form, if you do have something in front of the x, you want to factor that out. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Okay? And that also, that b is called the phase shift. So it could be positive or negative. If it's like this, it's going to be a negative phase shift. If it's like this, it's going to be a positive phase shift. So just like with other functions when you graph them if the x is being affected it does the opposite of what you would expect alright so we have 2 times the sine of x minus pi over 3 so here's a normal sine curve okay that 2 is going to stretch it vertically and then x minus pi over 3 okay the minus pi over 3 remember that actually shifts it right pi over 3 so our new period is going to be from, because we didn't change the period at all, instead of being from 0 to 2 pi, it's going to be from pi over 3 to 7 pi over 3. So that would be your completed um, curve. And the amplitude would, of course, be 2. The period would be 2 pi, because that was unchanged. And the phase shift would be a positive pi over 3. Okay, with the next one. So we have a regular cosine curve, so that's that. The 3 in front stretches it, okay, up to 3 into negative 3. And the plus 4, so we have a plus 4, so that's actually going to move it left. So now our phase shift is negative pi, or our period is from negative pi over 4 to 7 pi over 4, which is still 2 pi. And our phase shift is going to be a negative pi over 4. Amplitude is going to be 3, period, still 2 pi. And then with the last one, so again, we have a regular sine curve. Now we have a negative, so that's going to flip it. And then the 3 is going to stretch it. And then we have a negative pi over 4. So that means we move it right because of that negative. Okay, so we move it pi over 4 to the right. So our amplitude is 3, our period is still 2 pi, and our phase shift is pi over 4. So hopefully you're kind of seeing how these different things actually affect it. All right, so now let's try these on your own. So something to be aware of here is when you have this in the parentheses, we're going to have to get that out. We're going to have to factor it out. So um, we'll kind of show you how we do that. So first things first, uh, let's take care of that. So this. Okay, forget about this for a second. Just focus on getting the two-thirds out. So getting it away from the x is easy enough. But now, it's not pi over 6 because we have to do, to basically when you factor it out, you take whatever's in front and you multiply by the reciprocal. That when you factor it out and you have a fraction like that, that's essentially what you're going to do, even if you don't have a fraction. So 
pi over 6 times, because it's 2 thirds, we're going to do 3 halves. Okay, so that's going to become 2. So your new equation would be y equals 2 times the sine. And that 2 thirds goes out in front so that inside we have just the x. And now, oh, that's minus, my bad. Now, it's going to be pi over 4. Because pi over 6 times 3 over 2, which I got from the reciprocal of this. Okay, so that's reciprocal. Okay, the 3 and the 6 reduced to pi over 2 times basically 1 half, which is pi over 4. So that's our new function. Okay, so when we graph it, regular sine curve, the 2 doubles it, so this stretches it. Okay. The 2 thirds times x, so that basically means that it's going to take, remember it's 2 thirds, it's 2 pi divided by 2 thirds. So again, 2 pi, this is to find the period, mind you. So this tells you your period, and it's 2 pi, okay, so this is k, so it's 2 pi over k. So that, that 2 thirds there, we basically are multiplying by 3 halves. So the 2's cancel out. So now our period is 3 pi, and if you look, it's pretty darn close. It's not exact because of the PowerPoint. But it basically takes one period from 0 to 3 pi to complete one cycle. And then the negative pi over 4, okay, that's your phase shift. That's going to, because it's negative, we're moving it right pi over 4. Okay? Easy enough, I hope. Once we get it, once we get it into this, then it's just a matter of working the equ equation from left to right. All right. So again, you have your amplitude of two, your period of three pi, which we found out right here. The two is easy enough to get from that, and the phase shift, because that's minus pi over four, is just pi over four. All right. Let me get rid of that so that we have room for everything else. All right, so now this one, this gets even trickier. This kind of takes everything into consideration. So we have one half minus one half times the cosine of two x minus pi over three. So again, we can't have that in front of the x. So we need to take that, factor it out. So pi over three divided by two is the same as pi over three times one half which is pi over 6. Okay, so again, just making room here. So we take this pi over 6, so we have y equals 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2, which I got from right there, x, and then minus pi over 6, which I got from right there. All right, so let's take a look at a cosine graph, which is that right there. The one half out in front of the cosine, okay, is going to kind of change the amplitude, obviously, so it's going to vertically shrink it. Okay, the and then <coughs> the two is basically going to take and say, well, our instead of 2 pi, because remember, it's 2 pi over 2 now, which is just pi. So it takes pi to complete one full, um, one full cycle. And then we would move it up 1 half. And we would shift it over pi over 6. And then the final step, which was not done here, my apologies for that, is it because of this negative sign, 
it should have been flipped. So this is correct except for the fact that it should look like this. All right, so let me get rid of the green one for a second. So that would be this right here. So it got flipped because of the negative sign. Flip. This shifted up one half. Okay. And then we come over to here because this is the function after we changed it. Okay. The new period was just pi. And then we shifted right pi over 6. Okay, so that was the phase shift right there. Okay. So, now that we have all that done, so we are going to get through that. So this is basically, that you're going to want to make sure that this is what you understand. So, these are your functions for sine and cosine right here. Okay, that's sine, cosine. So C is what shifts the curve up or down C units. So if it's a half, it shifts it up at half. If it's negative 3, it shifts it down negative 3. So because it's, you know, it affects the Y, it does exactly what you would expect. The negative sign if it's minus whatever, then it reflects it over the x-axis. If it's plus, it just is a regular. The A, which is the amplitude, that's the vertical stretch or shrink. So if A is greater than 1, it's stretched. If A is between 0 and 1, it is shrunk. Pretty straightforward. Okay, remember, that K has got to be outside, so the X has to be by itself. Now, K is the period in terms of this. So... If you have a number like 4, even though you might say, well, you know, that's going to multiply by 4. No, it's not. 2 pi divided by 4 means you're actually going to be, you know, cutting it uh, by 4. So dividing it by 4. So instead of taking 2 pi to complete one period, it would only take pi over 2. So it behaves oppositely because it's affecting the x. It's affecting the horizontal. All right. So again, so if... Um, if one period will be greater than 2 pi if k is less than 1 but greater than 0 and if k is greater than 1 then one period will be less than 2 pi and then the b of course is the phase shift if it's plus b we move it left if it's minus b we move it right all right so now based off of these graphs we should be able to write a function um, just based off of what we see so Looking at this, we can see that because of this piece of it, we can tell that that's a cosine. So this is going to be easy. Uh, we may give you some where it's more than one period, so you could have more than one answer, depending. Just saying. Because um, you can change a sine and a cosine graph. Um, you can transform them in different ways so that they actually have the same graph. Um, so you might want to think about how that could happen. All right, so first off, let's look at our amplitude. Well, we only go up to one half, so we know our amplitude is one half. Our period, we go from negative pi over 3 to 2 pi over 3. So our period is only pi because it's from, from basically from that one end point to the other. It is only, so from here, oh, hold on, change, there we go. So from here to here, it's pi because this is 2 pi over 3 and from 0 to negative pi over 3 is pi over 3. So one period is pi. And then the phase shift. Now remember, cosine would normally start up here. Or, you know, right there. Um, so we've shifted left pi over 3, which means that we have a phase shift of negative pi over 3. Now the tricky part... So that's the easy part. Looking at it and figuring that out, the tricky part comes in writing that function. Amplitude's easy enough to do because we have that one half. All right, we knew that. Hopefully, you saw that the graph was flipped. Okay, because a regular remember a regular cosine curve looks like that. 
Okay, this is flipped. So it has it that negative because of the flip. Okay, now we have the 2 has to be out in front. Now when you have a phase shift and a change in period, you're going to have in parentheses x plus or minus something with a number outside. Okay, because remember this, our period was only pi. Normally it's 2 pi. So one way you can find that is, okay, so if my period is pi equals 2 pi over k, how do I find k? Well, you can multiply both sides by k. To get rid of it, divide both sides by pi to get rid of that. The 2 pi over pi would cancel out, leaving you with k equals 2, which is that right there. Okay, so that goes out in front, and then your phase shift, since we moved left, is a plus 3. Do not make the mistake of putting a minus 3. Your phase shift is negative pi over 3, but your in your function, it's plus pi over 3. All right, so now I've already actually pulled up your amplitude here. Um, and again, easy to tell because we go from 4 to negative 4. So as long as the top and bottom numbers are the same, there hasn't been a vertical shift. Okay? So just look for that too, because like here it was one half and negative one half. Here it's four, negative four. So we don't have to put a number out in front. Um, since there is none of that, amplitude is four. Period goes from now. Here's where this one gets tricky. It goes from negative one half to one. There's no pi. So, but again, okay. So your period is we have one half here. We have one. So that's one and one half or three halves. And your phase shift is just, again, a negative because we shifted to the left, one half. Okay, now the tricky part again comes in writing this because there's no pi in this. So what do you do? Because there has to be pi in the problem. So when there's no pi on your graph, that means that it's part of your k. All right, so our 4 we got from our amplitude. Okay, here's where the period comes in. So we have a period of 3 over 2. And again, set it up so 3 over 2 equals 2 pi over k. So we want k by itself. So multiply both sides by 2 thirds. And multiply both sides by k to get k by itself. Okay, so you get k equals 2 pi times 2 over 3, which equals 4 pi over 3. So that's where we got that. So since we have 4 pi over 3 on the outside, again, it's just going to be x. And our phase shift, which was negative one half, is still just going to be plus one. All right, so lot of stuff to take in. I get that. A lot of this can be confusing. I get that too. That's why we're going to have class time on Monday to work on this. However, once you know what parts of the function transform, what parts of the graph or the curve, it's really not that confusing. You just need to take it slow and go through it step by step very meticulously. Okay. There is no shortcut. There's no rushing through it. Take your time. And that's all I have. Sorry for the longer video. Have a good one.